All right, this is King VCI once again, clip five. Go ahead, my brother, continue. Now, picking up from where we live. Rose, in Rosewood at the Robinson Bridge. On that note about I'm a die black, and I'm proud of my blackness. I don't want no blonde hair. I don't want no red hair. I want what God gave me. But when you don't, if you don't feel good about yourself, then you'll do those things. Well, sometimes we feel that we got to be somebody else in order to be ourselves. <laughs> and I find that to be a mental state. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I believe, you know. Yes, sir. But now, getting back to yeah. Valdosta. Yes, sir. Yeah, let's try okay. to stick, yeah, contract the money. Yeah. Now, you know, tomorrow, like mm -hmm. I said, yes, sir. On from, from clip four, mm -hmm. is that we sitting down with hood housing. And we're going to be discussing this set-aside issue, putting the money directly in the hand of the contractor. We have city officials that's getting involved. We are called into the White House with the chief of staff office, you know, and letting them know what we are trying to do down here. Doc, are you saying that just to pump yourself up? I mean, you, mean you, 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 you are serious enough about blacks getting their equal share of contracts and the monies that come in this community, you're serious enough about it to actually call Washington, D.C.? Well, listen, there was a seminar in Atlanta that was sponsored for small businesses and minority businesses out of the chief of staff's office, mm -hmm. okay, promoting small businesses. Mm -hmm. And one of our companies attended, and they brought the information back, and it connected us. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to promote the program, trying to build a model. So we set the city manager down, and the very first question I asked him, because I said, I say, listen, forgive me for using this language. I'm a minister. But I got to talk to you in this manner, this dialogue, to start our conversation, because we got to be able to talk about certain things without getting angry. We got to speak on certain issues without getting thrown off balance and we got to touch on some issues of the past in order to bring us up to today. And his name is Larry Hansen, the city manager of Valdosta. And I asked Mr. Hansen these words. Mr. Hansen, I would not use this language again, but have you ever called a man a nigger? And he looked kind of like he swallowed a, an apple or something. And he said back, he said, no, I haven't. I said, I didn't ask you, did you use the word? I asked you, had you ever called a man? So I accept that. I said, now the reason that I wanted to talk to you like this, I won't use this language again, is that we got to be able to discuss the word so that we can talk about it and everybody get off of eggshells so that we won't be saying this about the race card. So we're going to bury this now before we get started. You know that we come before your city and we told you and the mayor while you was at city council that this city has been run by the good old boys and that this city has been operated by the good old boys. Doc, doc excuse me. Now, you excuse me if I interrupt you. I don't do it out of um, ignorance mm -hmm. and I, I, I do it because I want to uh, shed some light on things. Go ahead. Now, you have said that so many times in the city of Valdosta in public meetings. But have, you, have they ever published any of that in the, in, in, in the paper or on TV so other people can hear the hardcore problem in our community? And, and, and if not, why not? They are not going to publish any of this because they are, uh, they are part of the system. They are controlled. This is, a, this, is a, this is something that was plotted ever since 1860. I said there have never been no blacks and you no see, high office. And you said, he said that at a public meeting. Okay, and these people have been dominating these positions every for 100 and going on 51 years. Any city that's predominantly black, that's 58% in the city, 38% in the country, in the county. Now, even with the voting power, even the Justice Department have found them guilty of different things, and they get under court orders for discrimination. And here we are now, they're disobeying the order, but they're riding the edge through the school board system. They've used blacks and put them in positions slightly below them 
and use them as they manipulators. And, and explain that once the blacks get in power in Valdosta and Lyons County, when they when they come in come into power, they can't speak for, 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 for the people that put them in office. It seems like as if though they have a, a mind change or they, they become totally uh, controlled. Uh, I don't know of any, not one black leader, and I'm, I'm giving all of them respect, who will really take on the issues in our community. We got railroad tracks on the south side over there that nobody's even saying anything about. Yet we got black county commissioner, we got city, I mean, why, why is this? You, you, you have Ms. Evans. No she, disrespect. She, she, she's the only black commissioner, okay? And she's a good person. Yes. Okay? But... You know, um, her position is ineffective, okay? When it comes to what the decision making be and who get to con do all the construction on the north side and don't anything happen on the south side, she is ineffective. In fact, when we go to the city, when it comes to the communities and the slum areas, the ghetto areas, the, they'll bring us monuments ineffective okay they're working our streets and and just finish destroying our small businesses from the decisions ineffective okay so we are sick and tired of their ineffectiveness and being used and manipulated by these whites that sits at the top of the plateau and utilize them to make us suffer out here so what we are doing now, we are sitting down with the power structure, which is the top officials, which so happen to be white. And we are talking now, and we are crossing these barriers. We're trying to bring it together along the lines of truth. Not, you know, the fact of the matter is, we got to face it. Okay? We got to face the facts. And the fact is that we all going to lose if we don't come together. Our word to them and everyone else is, you don't have to like me, I don't have to like you, but we must live together. And this we're going to have to do. Now we're going to get part of the contracts on the south side. We're going to get some ownership on the south side. We're going to get some of the money on the south side. We want our president to invest, to invest in the ghetto. This is not about race. And what we need to do is, is everyone to come in and they'll speak these issues on race. Then they'll come up and cover it up with Jesus. I'm a minister. Then the bank will get one of our men out of our clergy and lend him thirty or forty thousand dollars. Then they'll utilize this church to and won't invite everyone from the community just to get it approved to say we've got the word out that we are not buying that anymore. Days of that is all gone. That's over. done. It's done. Done with. And we are not. And we're it. not gonna quit. No. We're not gonna quit. And it's up. Look, this thing now have bubbled up in my opinion so deeply now, and it's getting bigger and bigger until it ain't just us. There are other people now. And who can see the eyes have been opened, the scales fell from the eyes like saw along the Damascus Road. And and so 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 it ain't no end to it. Now it's just like Dr. King. Dr. King wasn't so great. It's just that the, the time had come. And when the time done come, there ain't nothing you can do. You can unplug the clock from the wall, but it don't change a thing. Don't change nothing. Time keep on rolling. And our point is this. We are willing to work together 100 percent and we love our brother yes. without a reason of doubt. We don't walk around and, 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 and horn his hate. No, no, no. It's, it's not about that. Mm -mm. It's about that we are sick and tired of looking at the projects. We are sick and tired of... That we don't have no, no, we don't have no participation. The Hudson Docket area, the, all that building that took place over there. All that money went all that went back to the, went back to the white community and, 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 and the Latino. It and that, 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 that got to be disgraceful for the people well, that live in that community. And they unemployed in these hard economic times. And what somebody else come in their community when that federal funds is involved. Yeah, absolutely right. And what we're trying to say, and we, no, we're not trying to say it, we're saying it, is that we are not going to stand by and, we, and, and allow no one to manipulate us out here in general by utilizing and using ministers, city council members, now, commissioners, we are going to make this thing work in spite of, okay? We're going to work with your city managers. We're going to work with your commissioners. And we are not going, we're not going to take down. We're not going to back off. And we are going to share into some of the contracts. And we're going to do it on a fair basis called equilibrium, okay? 
Are we going to are, are we, are we file complaints? Do that again, equilibrium. Equilibrium. You do it like that? Yes, sir. Equilibrium, no, okay. sir. Equilibrium. Oh, e equilibrium. Equilibrium. By the hand. Yes, sir. So the scale can be, be can be balanced, okay? All right. And we want to lean more toward justice. Yes, okay? sir. And equality. This is what I want to end this note on. And it is that we realize the fact. You realize the fact. Now let us talk about the fact and then let us act upon the fact by the fact. Yes, sir. And so uh, what you see here and what you hear here is what you will not hear anyplace else. I was on the radio. I got on the radio in 89, and I was talking along these same lines. But, of course, because I don't own the newspaper, the television, and the radio, then it's like lost. But there are people like Robertson who heard. There are others of you who heard. But we got to come together collectively and don't just focus only on Valdosta. That's right. Because Brooks County is the same way. Eckers County is the same way. Lanier County is the same way. No matter where you go, the problem of our co community is always the same. And there was a time, my beautiful brothers and sisters, when the preachers would be in the forefront of trying to get yes. things changed. But now, apparently, all they want to do, and I love my beautiful pastor. I got minister license myself but I got a new mind in my head. And I, I realized that when I go to the store to buy some Pampers yeah. for my babies, or since they're all grown, or a birthday card, Jesus don't buy. Not the Lord myself won't buy no No, yet. sir, no scripture will buy. It take, what you, how you say it, M-O-N-E-Y, -E money, money, and money. Go ahead, my brother, enjoy. Now, now listen, um, we're going to end this off like this because we need our president and all our officials to realize that we need them to invest in the America's ghettos. And instead of putting that money on the bridges and all the road infrastructure, put that money in revitalizing the, the low-income areas and put America back to work and the economy, believe me, will blast through the roof. And all we are asking for is, is, is equilibrium. It's not about racism. It's, 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 it's about the effectiveness of racism and the ineffectiveness of our politicians. All right, you've heard it. This is the end. This is tape cut five. And I also want to say to you, this is GBR, which means George Boss Ryan, kvci.blogspot.com. Also by way of YouTube. But we're going to get a lot more out to you because we intend for the people in Valdosta, South Georgia, and throughout the United States of America to get the truth because we go to church too, in the church of our own mind. And we understand that ye shall know the truth, and only the truth gonna set us free. If you find a man that is not free, it's only because he haven't been given truth yet. But we knocking on his door. Rose,